Uh, and also, just because this isn't quite the last session of KubeCon, there is at least one more after this, and I want to highlight the person in the very front, front row, Gara, who's going to be giving that session. Uh, and he really could or should be giving this session right now because he did a lot of the work for Topology Hero Routing. So I'll credit to Gara here. So he can come up and give the same talk. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'll try and live up to it. But, uh, Let's talk about topology or routing and the many trade-offs that exist within topology or routing. Uh, my name is Rob Scott. I work at Google on GK Networking. I've worked there for five years or thereabouts. And uh, before then, I was an end user of Kubernetes. So I have some experience with actually dealing with some of the frustrations and magic of Kubernetes along the way. But these days, I mostly work on things like Gateway API and other Kubernetes networking things. Now, it might help to provide just a little bit of context about what we're talking about with topology or routing and the components involved here. So first off, uh, there are service <coughs> pods, probably mostly familiar with them, and then there's this really fun endpoint slice controller. Well, I'm probably the only person who considers it fun. This was my <laughs> first project, Welcome to Google. Uh, and so endpoint slice controller is this thing that basically creates shards of endpoints, uh, and for each service, finds all the pods, finds the IPs and ports, drops them into an end endpoint slice. And then you have a data plane, usually could proxy, on each node that reads those and does some cool IP tables magic to do the routing for you. And what we're going to be talking about is different forms of logic in Kube proxy or your Kubernetes data plane of choice. So by default, everything just goes everywhere in Kubernetes. Well, maybe, maybe not everywhere, but there's no concept of preferring traffic stay close to where it originated from. If it's an endpoint behind a service, it's equally likely to go there as opposed to one in a completely different zone. We don't really care. Now, the pros of that is it's least likely to overload traffic to a single endpoint. And auto-scaling is straightforward. Well, I'm not going to say auto-scaling is ever completely straightforward, but it's less complicated than when you start to add some preference about where traffic goes. On the con side, if you happen to use a cloud provider or something where traffic going across zones is expensive, this approach can be rather expensive. And then second, you know, if you do want to isolate uh, your applications across zonal boundaries, this doesn't work very well for that. So very many people have asked this seemingly simple question. Wouldn't it be nice if traffic could, could just go closer to where it originated from. Can we just keep it closer to where it started from? And naive, younger me thought this would be a really cool problem to try and solve. And it is not simple or many other things to solve. And well, here we go. But let's talk about what we ideally want. So the ideal is that you can keep traffic close to where it originated from. So you can minimize costs, improve that zonal isolation, and ideally, what you want is you fill the closest endpoints, and then you spill over to the next, next closest endpoints. But what does full actually mean? And that's actually a very loaded question. It's very difficult to determine what full means. It's going to be different for every workload, for every organization. Maybe it's some combination of CPU, memory, GPU utilization. Maybe it's active connections. Maybe it's an L7 metric that we don't really have at all in Kubernetes. I don't know. And then secondary, like Kubernetes API Server is not really a great solution for propagating this information all the way down. Kubernetes API Server is just not meant for this kind of rapidly updating data. Endpoint slices is basically the limit of how far you want to push that, and you definitely don't want to add metrics or anything beyond that. So should we add some kind of new way to propagate per endpoint metrics to the data plane? And I start go, started going down quite the rabbit hole here. Uh, and don't worry, I haven't given up on this rabbit hole, but ultimately, something is better than nothing. So don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Let's start with something that we can achieve, and then we'll revisit that proper feedback loop at some future point. So perfection is not quite as good as progress. So let's just aim for progress and go from there. So let's talk about the very long history of topology. 
didn't want to deal with. And we may introduce another level of hierarchy at some point in the future, but for now we want to just start with two because that represented the most common case. So how this works is probably best represented by this diagram. So let's say that you have three equally sized zones and you, you have four endpoints in one of those zones, three endpoints in another zone, and two endpoints in the other one. What's going to happen is in zone A, you're gonna take the three endpoints that you already have there and keep them allocated to zone A. You're gonna keep the same for zone B, but you notice zone C, we only have two local endpoints, so we're gonna take that extra endpoint from zone A and allocate it to zone C, so it's only ever serving traffic for zone C. And this seemed, you know, this diagram makes it seem, well, okay, that's fairly straightforward. Yeah, we can, we can do that. But believe me, the edge cases got rather contrived. And we'll start working through that in a little bit. So how do we come to this? How do we, you know, it's easy when you just look at one simple example to decide, well, this is what it should do. But trying to make this scale with any possible number of inputs, remarkably complicated. So first, we had the desired endpoints. This was the number of endpoints that we thought each zone should be allocated. So in that previous example, we, sa we said each zone should be allocated three endpoints, or a third of the endpoints that are available. And then we have overload, which is the percentage difference between the desired endpoints, the, th the number of endpoints we think a zone should have, and the ones we're actually able to allocate to it. And then there's this threshold where if we can't achieve what we think is a relatively safe allocation, we just bail out. We say, okay, there's two, we, we can't allocate enough endpoints here, so we're just gonna bail out and just spray everywhere because we think that's safer. So this is trying to be a very cautious approach to topology or routing. Now, I kind of mentioned this before, don't wanna go into too much detail here, but a key concept of here is trying to understand how much uh, capacity we expect to have in each zone, how much traffic we expect to have, and this was based on allocatable node CPU. The rationale was, well, basically that CPU cores would be roughly proportional to the amount of workloads in the zone, so the things that could originate tra traffic, and also roughly you know, approximate to the number of endpoints for, say, an L4 load balancer that you know, is equally distributing traffic across nodes. This is at least the idea. So as a very, very rough example, let's say that we have 40 CPU cores in zone A, 60 CPU cores in zone B, and we have an equal number of endpoints in each location. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take four of those endpoints and give them to zone A, or we're gonna take one extra endpoint from zone A and give it to zone B. So this should feel somewhat familiar to that previous diagram. Now, if you had experience with topology, well actually, anyone have experience with topology aware hints? Okay, great, okay, cool. Uh, so if you had experience with that, you may have gotten confounded when it didn't work the way you thought it did. Any, anyone, anyone? Okay, so mostly the same hands, okay. Uh, so the guardrails we added were both confusing and fragile. You know, despite our best efforts to try and keep everything safe, one of the most confounding things was this max overload threshold. And the problem here was, well, when you have a small number of endpoints, if you have an uneven number, we're gonna bail out all the time because we say, oh, you have four endpoints, we can't distribute those evenly. We didn't have fractional endpoints. And so, well, we'll just bail out, we'll spray everywhere. So imagine you're transitioning between a state where you have three ready endpoints and four ready endpoints, and so you had three and everything's going to the same zone. You go to four, nope, we're spraying everywhere. Go to five, spraying everywhere. Go to six, okay, same zone again. Very confusing. So good feedback, got it, that, that is confusing. Then there's this other thing that we don't exist in a vacuum, and actually Gaurav, front row, he's the one who, who found this specific issue. Uh, sometimes there are issues that exist outside of your little bubble, and my little bubble is SIG network. And we had this assumption that every time a node was ready, we'd already have a zone label on it. But what if that assumption is broken, and what if, for example, a node becomes ready before a zone is assigned? Well, chaos, apparently, because <laughs> Basically what we do in this is we say if we don't have sufficient data and one of the key inputs was the, the zone of a node, like we have five CPUs in zone A and six CPUs in zone B, but if we have an unknown CPU, we just, well, we don't have enough information, so we bail out. And it's not just bail out on one service, 
it bails out on every single service in the cluster because they're all affected by that same input. So this is a very, very painful thing. Anytime you have a new node come up, it doesn't have a zone in some edge cases, then all your topology web routing just stops working and it just sprays everywhere, which, why did my build just go up? Well, confusing, confounding set of factors. So we finally made it to attempt three, which is traffic distribution. And this is, I have to give credit where credit is due. This is really Garov kind of picked up at this point and turned this one into a reality. Uh, so at this point, we have topology aware hints. You remember this where we take C endpoint C and move it over that extra endpoint to the other zone. Uh, sorry, the extra endpoint from A to C. With the traffic distribution, we just give up on all of that and we just say, you're on your own, roughly. <laughs> and you, we trust you to have enough endpoints in every zone and we're just gonna route traffic to a local endpoint if any exist. So if traffic is originating from zone A, we're gonna keep it in that zone as long as there's any healthy endpoints. And so this really shifts the burden a bit but removes a lot of those confusing guardrails so there's no worry about uh, any of the weird edge cases if you don't have enough endpoints, if a node doesn't have the label you expect, et cetera. This is you know, maybe the most basic form that you could look for. Now with that said, we've left a lot of room for flexibility in the definition of this. So there's a new field on the service API called traffic distribution. And it accepts a single value right now. Well, actually, I think you can just not specify it. But if you do specify it, the single value you can specify is prefer close. And what that says is it's basically optimizing for proximity rather than equal distribution. This whole talk is about trade-offs, right? You can, you can either optimize for you know, minimizing cost, optimizing proximity, or you can optimize for even distribution of load and presumably slightly more reliability along the way. But we've left some room open. The, the description I just had was very much focused on what Kube Proxy does. But there are lots of data planes in the Kube, Kubernetes ecosystem. Some may have different, way, different ways to do this. And there, this, anything on Service API has a much broader reach than just Service API. There are things like Ingress, like Gateway, like multi-cluster service that are built on top that may also have different ways that may be better to handle this. So we're really just trying to provide a way to communicate a preference, and then the underlying implementation may have some ways to do things a little bit better, and we'll get into that shortly. So yeah, I mean, the, the Kubernetes ecosystem has grown to support many, many different data planes, e ecosystems, and hopefully some data planes will be able to support some kind of waterfall approach where you can fill and then spill, kind of that ideal case where you have some understanding of when, a, when an endpoint is full and fill that up first before spilling over to other zones. Now let's talk about a failure story. And I don't mean to heckle, but Flynn is, is right here, so I'll, I'll do a little bit. Um, it was to my surprise, just a few months ago, I saw this blog post. Now remember, I, I've done a lot of the topology or routing work and I see a blog post telling me the trouble with topology or routing. Like, okay, well, I should probably read this because this is something I'm very aware of. And, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, sacrificing reliability, yeah, okay, I, I get it. So actually, in fairness, I do recommend the, reading this because it is a useful blog post, and I want to walk through a couple quotes. So what happens when things go wrong here? And topology or routing is great when everything is healthy. I agree. But if one experiences problems, pods fail, become slow, or traffic becomes unevenly distributed, the zone is left to its own devices. This is completely correct. Topology over routing prevents pods in the, in the failing zone from ever being able to reach pods in other zones. So if you're saying all traffic needs to stay in the, sa stay in the same zone, then okay, this is a real problem. But this is what I would say the best kind of correct. Uh, this was based on pod health checks not catching the pod being unavailable. So what's happening here in their example is that if for some reason you're, you have a zonal failure that your readiness probes don't catch. For example, there's a, a database that has a zonal replica and that zonal replica is unavailable and your readiness probes don't, don't catch that, then you have this kind of zonal failure and that all the traffic is never going to recover. This is not 
particularly unique to topology over routing, but it is worse with topology over routing, is what I would say. So, yes, this is the best kind of correct, and it is absolutely something we need to watch out for uh, in this space. So, I think their summary is good here. Without topology or routing, you're, you're stuck in a space where you have to pay for this kind of cross-zone traffic. And with topology or route, aware routing, I would say you have to make some compromises to overall availability. There's always some level of trade-off here. What those are, like that very specific scenario where there's some other dependency that your Kubernetes readiness probes can't catch is very real, right? And if you have things like that that you're could fail that way, then you really need to be careful with this. So let's walk through some recommendations. So first off, if you're not using auto-scaling, topology spread constraints are your friends. So you, ideally what we've said so far is we're relying on you now to keep enough endpoints in every zone. So one way to do that is use topology spread constraints and ensure that your pods are evenly distributed across zones. So this can help in many cases, but if you are using auto-scaling, which you probably want to, there are some fun interactions here. Well, maybe not fun, uh, but interactions to be aware of. So let's just take one example here, where all your traffic, or a huge percentage of your traffic, is originating from zone B. So let's just imagine for a second that zone A and zone C are hardly getting any traffic, so they're sitting at, say, 10% utilization, and zone B pods are just completely overwhelmed at 100% utilization. If you average that out, you land at 40% average utilization, and if your HPA is targeting, say, I don't know, 50, 60, 70% to scale, completely misses this. And so you're just completely stuck in this space. So unfortunately, what you have to do right now, or what I would recommend doing, is having a separate deployment and HPA per zone. So we all be behind the same service, but unfortunately, if you want to save yourself from this kind of failure, you really need to have the separate deployment and HPA configuration in each zone. So that was a lot. Let's go through a quick recap. So first off, we, we have three different attempts. We're currently on attempt number three uh, of topology or routing. The first one was topology keys. It was infinitely flexible, but very hard to implement or test. Then we got into topology aware hints, which was trying to add maybe too many guardrails, and those guardrails were very confusing. Uh, and now we got to traffic distribution, which is where we are right now, which is really the uh, simplest form of traffic topology aware routing we could think of with some flexibility built in. So a few tips here. Uh, one. There's some trade-offs involved here. You're either preferring closer endpoints, and that will negatively affect availability, or you may end up paying more or not having properly isolated zones if you don't use topology or routing. Then second, auto-scaling itself, right? So if you're going to use auto-scaling in conjunction with this, I strongly, strongly recommend that you pair it with separate deployments and HPAs per zone. Uh, otherwise, topology spread constraints could work reasonably well without some form of auto-scaling. So there's a lot still that's happening here. So all of the following is going to be implementation specific, but I know of some work that's already in progress to support this on service type load balancer, uh, on gateway API, and on multi-cluster multi service. So if you think of, you know, service is a foundational API in Kubernetes, and all these other bits are very much related to it, right? So if a service is configuring that I would prefer my traffic stay close, well, maybe load balancing, maybe multi-cluster service, maybe gateway API should also handle that. And, and that kind of work is already in progress in at least some cases. Um, then I want to call out, you know how I said the ideal world would be some kind of feedback loop where you could understand when something was full? We, I, I haven't forgotten about that, I promise. So we've come full circle now, and we're working with Cilium uh, to uh, use something called XDS. Uh, so for those of you uh, who may not be familiar, XDS is Envoy, well, okay, so it could be a universal data plane API. That's, that's what some people would say. Flynn is not a fan of that. Uh, but it's most well known for being the configuration language that Envoy and gRPC use. Uh, it has some significant benefits that Kubernetes API server does not support right now. So for example, 
it has a battle-tested load reporting service, which we're trying to use to complete that final feedback loop so you can actually understand at your uh, control plane level how full are my endpoints and when do I need to spill over. Uh, and so you already have a lot of these concepts built into XDS, into XDS control planes. And then maybe one other key thing here is XDS supports something called De Delta XDS, which allows us to send across the wire only the things that have changed, which when you're trying to scale this up becomes a very significant win. So if you're curious about the work in Cilium, I left a link there. This is, still, this is slow, ongoing work, but I'm excited to see some additions to this that may make this even better uh, in additional data planes. Now this is a bit of a stretch, but I just, I just have to throw this out there. I've been focusing on, a lot on topology wire routing, but there's a different kind of routing that has some similar constraints. And that's what I would like to call LLM aware routing. And that's basically understanding where adapters are loaded, where models are loaded on pods, and routing based on that. And that's a project I've been working on more and more. Uh, if you're interested, we have an instance gateway project uh, under a working group serving. Uh, but basically, it's selecting endpoints based on where adapters are loaded, not zones, but maybe a different kind of topology. And then, yeah, get involved, because this is, there's a lot to do here. There's lots of integrations still to be done. And obviously, not, what we've presented here is not going to solve all of your use cases. So if you have a use case that isn't covered, isn't represented, uh, come get involved. We need more feedback. We need improved test coverage. And if we need more features, let us know. Uh, so this is meant to be, you know, this is open source, right? So we can all work on this together and make it better. Uh, also want to call out that we are hiring. Uh, this is specific to Google, but if you want to work with me on my team as a PM, it's an open position. Uh, with that, any questions? All right, well, thanks, everyone. One question, sorry. Yeah, um, have you considered or is there a plan to go to node-based routing instead of um, like AZ-based routing? You know, trying to keep, if there is exists the same pod in node A, it keeps the traffic in node A so it doesn't yes. address. Yes, I don't see Dan here. Oh, okay, Dan, yes, Dan is the person. But yes, that is absolutely a thing that is being considered and Dan probably knows the, the latest state better than I do, but not to put you on the spot. But <laughs> It's, yeah, there's a cap for that, yes. Uh, All right, thank you. Is it, yeah, but definitely, maybe we can find, a, what do we call it? I forget, is it just prefer local, I think? Yeah, I think prefer local is the thing. I don't know. Oh, yeah, sure, thank you. <laughs> so there was a cap for prefer local topology, and that all got like voted down because of the whole distributing problem. There's a PR open to amend the traffic distribution cap to include a node local uh, state, particularly for things that are deployed with a daemon set where we can assume, therefore, that you have sufficient coverage on every node to stay, uh, prefer specifically for like core DNS. Um, all right, can I switch my ingress over to daemon set? Got it. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks, Dan. Um, so I believe that today there's a requirement that their service has to have nine pods before topology way routing will kick in. Uh, do you have plans to get rid of that? Because like for some of our services, it doesn't make sense to have nine pods. Oh, no, no, yeah. So that was attempt two. That was topology aware hints that had that kind of like, it wasn't a strict requirement, but it really only worked well beyond nine pods in practice. So no, that, that's completely gone with traffic distribution. So yeah, good question. Has there been any consideration or attempt to fix horizontal pod autoscaling to be topology aware? Yes, yes, I, I, would, I would be the biggest fan of that ever, but as my understanding, I, to be clear, I'm not the expert here, but my understanding is that it's kind of a sequ sequential dependency where scheduling first needs to be able to support scheduling a pod into a specific zone, and then once that's done, maybe autoscaling could support per zone autoscale, but like there's a few, foundational things that need to happen first. Um, uh, and, and do those labels still exist, or are those yeah. labels? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, those, yeah, I should have been clear. clear. The labels I just described in step two stuck around. Even the hints, even the hints API stuck around, but we just used it in hopefully a simpler way. So, yeah. So I'm Flynn, and uh, 
A, I think it's completely fair for Rob to heckle. You know, ca carry on. I would also encourage everybody to, to go read the blog post to find out exactly what we were saying. Yes. There is a part two of that post. One of the big things that we also talked about had to do with cases where it wasn't that an endpoint went away, it was that an endpoint was still there, but it wasn't working properly. Yeah. And that turns out to be a pretty big deal in a lot of yeah. realistic cases. So um, that, I guess that's my counter heckle or something. <laughs> you know? No, to, to be clear, I do Happy to talk to anybody about that who, you know, anybody who wants to talk about that, yeah, come on over. We can chat. It'll be fine. I, I do recommend. every. It, this is worth a read. There is a part two, also worth a read. So, yes, I, I, I agree. Yes. I just want to resonate with using separate deployment in HPA because we have gone the topology spread constraint route. It is extremely complicated, especially with our use case where we work with school districts so they don't use them during the night. So we scale down to minimal and you have to have minimal, which is one per zone. Otherwise, and that includes your gateway or load balancers because we found out if you don't have a load balancer in the zone as well, no traffic goes to the pods that are in that zone. So it was very tricky um, dealing with like min domains as well was also very tricky. Just getting it to spread correctly, very difficult. Yep, yep, completely agree. Cool, anyone else? Great, well thank you. And a reminder, there is a talk right after this in the same room for anyone interested, but yes.